You, yeah, you, you are a electrical, magnetic, toroidal, compulsion, photon, phonon, sound and light, quantum, nine ether, frequency being. You have the ability to transcend time and space. Your words, they affect and they create your worlds. You are an individual expression of source code. You are spirit having a biological experience. You are biological, neurological, spiritual being. It is time for you to shine by activating your mind with your God-given design. Your true currency is energy. It's not money. Elevate your mind. What you feel, that's what you real. It's time to learn how to increase your cellular electricity. Your 12 cranial nerves are controlled by your 12 verbs. Your verbs control your nerves. The circle of Willis. This is the key to controlling the monkey. The monkey has your key to your money. So control the monkey mind with your God-given design. You have superpowers that you're not aware of. Everyone on the planet has the ability to magnetically attract what they want into their life. Whatever you think and feel naturally becomes your reality. We are constantly creating our own reality whether we are conscious of it or not. Everything on the planet vibrates at a certain frequency. As your frequency begins to vibrate higher, you're going to experience thoughts and emotions that are contained within that frequency. So if you're vibrating within a frequency of love, you're going to experience loving thoughts and emotions. According to research from Harvard, human beings are basically walking energetic magnets. Around your body, there exist two magnetic fields, a smaller one and a larger one. They are commonly known as a torus, and they're the magnetic fields of your heart. We all know the principle of physics where like attracts like. Whatever your field is vibrating at is what will naturally come into your field. So this means the higher your heart vibrates, the more your field expands. And so the more your field expands and the bigger it is, you are able to attract abundance so much easier. As Einstein said, everything is energy. That's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want to attract and you cannot help but get that reality. This is not philosophy. This is physics. And the next time I get a flagged video, TikTok is going to ban my account completely. So I'm going to use different terms here. So first off, we have the microcosmic orbit breathing. And the reason why this helps with longevity of performance is because you take your excited energy that you're feeling in your navel or your sacral chakra. And by deeply breathing into it, you start to disperse that energy so it's not just super concentrated in your excited parts. Next, you visualize that energy coming down through your root and then up the back of your spine, all the way around through your crown, then back down the front of your body. So you inhale down and up, and then you exhale down the front of your body. Yes, it's a Qigong exercise, but it's also used for having full body climatic experiences. Do not knock it until you try it. This is the place of the electricity, which is in the lower part of the body. It runs up through seven chakras, which are seven nerve centers or resistors in your spine. It impacts in the pineal gland and throws open the right hemisphere of the brain. You know, you've heard of like Buddhists and people and that meditate going, oh, oh, you've heard of that. And the energy comes up. Well, let me show you something. This electrical, this is electrical energy. The seven chakras are seven resistors. And the international measurement of electrical resistance is, oh, and the way that energy comes up through your spine, hits the pineal, and opens the right hemisphere of the brain is exactly the way the sun comes up from December to April, hits Aries, moves to the, in the northern hemisphere to the right side, and summer comes to the world. Or summer comes to the northern hemisphere. It's exactly right. That's why it happens. That's why you meditate. You meditate to duplicate the energy of the sun. That's why the Jesus is crucified, sits in the tomb, and then rises within you, sits at the right hand of the Father, means sitting at the right hemisphere of the brain. It says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. One of the amazing things I've seen on television sometime, I, I, saw, I, I saw a Catholic priest. And he was saying that, you know, the Kundalini was an evil thing and that people shouldn't believe in it and shouldn't get involved in it. So don't. Get involved in the book of Revelation. That's not evil, because that's ours. It's the same exact thing. It says in the book of Revelation, on Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1, I saw in the right hand. That's your right hemisphere. 
of him who sat on the throne. That's the highest mind. A book, the book of life, as he said. And it's written within and on the back side, which is your spine, sealed with seven seals. Don't get involved in Kundalini, but get involved in that. So this is the Phoenician way of doing it. It's called hand behold, nail behold, teeth nail eye. He who exists and causes things to exist, he secures and watches. That's literally what it means. So now come down here and the, the, this becomes Yahweh Hasha. So it's right here. This is the Tetragrammaton, yod Hevavhe, that's the Pentagrammaton, uh, Yahashua. So it's in the middle, it's, it's earth, air, spirit, fire, water. So spirit's right in the middle, obviously. So you see that, that body right there, it's a human being. It's a human being. There's the Tetragrammaton, the four, yod Hevavhe, and then inside the star you have yod he Yahashua. Yahashua. Uh, you got the earth, air, fire, water, spirit again, Yahashua. It says Yahashua literally means Jesus. That's uh, Jesus' name. So it's right there, Yahashua, okay? Then you keep going and it says right here, Yahawa is yod he That's just earth, air, fire, water. That's only the tetragrammaton. So now you got to get the pentagrammaton. So this is yod he uh, That's the tetragrammaton right there. Uh, hand behold, nail behold. So hand look, nail look. See, look, the nail that Jesus gets stabbed with his nail. This comes all the way from back then. Like this, this is this is 1500 BC. So what is this? This is way before uh, 1500 BC. It's like 3,000 years ago, supposedly. Basically, you guys have to wake up because you guys are so far behind. There you go. That's earth, air, fire, water, spirit. Yod Hevavhe. So if you haven't seen this, just type in tetragrammaton. That's the tetra. Now this is the penta, the pentagrammaton. That's all it is, guys. Right there. See? yod he vav he yod he vav he shin So you guys need to know what the shin means. It's the W inside. It's that W-looking shape. The Merkaba. Boom. Now, all these Hebrew letters, they actually come from this thing. Look, that looks like the Pharaoh's cap. Now, you put this in your hand, and you can make all the shapes of the Hebrew letters. So you guys, go, you guys need to learn that. This guy's name is Stan Tenen. And you can make all the Hebrew letters with this uh, toy. Hebrew Bible, it says the Nephilim. Nephal in Hebrew means to fall. So the fallen ones, those from heaven came to earth. Egyptians understood that we come down from the stars and go into our flesh bodies. So now they made the pyramids go from your flesh body back up to the stars. So here's the four elements. It says in the book of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible, which is before the English Bible, it says in the beginning of creation, the Elohim created the heavens and the earth. It also says, or then the Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Elohim is El, which means him, El Sol, the sun, La, which means her, La Luna, and him means them. So the Elohim give us the elements. It's a fact that the seven metals come from the seven luminaries. Did you know that you were sung into existence? That's what I would call the seed or the word, sometimes the fire or the energy. Notice here the words taken out of the heart chakra and the joy is stolen. Keep reading. Yes, Yah's seed travels in the sperm and grows into your spinal cord, which directly links to the pituitary gland. Interesting, right? Near your third eye. This is what enables you to feel, think, have emotions, and use those emotions to manifest. Here are what some real stars look like. It's incredible cymatics. Maybe, just maybe, you were there from the very beginning and you've forgotten. Have you pondered this? And what this means? Let me know in the comments. There's a sexual relationship between your heart and your mind and I'm going to share with you how to activate this in order to get enhanced intuition. When you are first conceived within your mother's womb, the first thing that forms is your heart and it beats by itself because it has 40,000 brain cells. What follows is the tip of your tongue followed by the rest of your body and your heart is the strongest connected organ to your brain through that of the vagus nerve. So when you place the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth and start to massage the hard lump just before the soft plate is you start to create the sexual energy 
between your heart and your mind and your mind starts to create these alpha brain waves and you create what is known as heart and brain coherence and the signals from your heart to your brain get stronger. This is known as your intuition. I want to share with you guys an image that has been stuck in my head. Besides the fact that I draw like a third grader, this is very important to understand. Right here, it shows you how the human is supposed to be moving. And that is with a direct connection to mama earth and the ground. A direct connection to the heavens and the spirit realm above. While using your heart to move forward. And that is why people say lead with love because the heart is the driving force. And that's also why I say if you want to manifest, you have to bring the emotion into it. Because the emotion is just energy in motion. But we've been taught to erase this completely. To forget our connection to our mama earth. And to disconnect from things that we can't see. So that we stay trapped into this intellectual little bubble that we call the head. Therefore disconnecting us from all that is around us. Even ourselves. The heart chakra is located at the center of our chest. And it's associated with the color green. This chakra has a feminine energy and it's represented by the element of air. The heart chakra connects the lower three and the upper three chakras, acting as a bridge between the worldly matters and the higher consciousness. This chakra holds the ability to love unconditionally and have kindness and compassion for ourselves and others. And it allows us to live life with peace and joy. When the heart chakra is out of balance, we're disconnected from ourselves and we have difficulty loving ourselves. We don't feel deserving of love. We feel like we have to please others to be loved. We're not able to receive love because we think that we're not worthy and we're not able to connect with others with love. By having these negative thoughts, we block ourselves from receiving love. It can cause depression and feeling of unworthiness. It makes it hard for us to forget our past hurts and not be able to forgive. We feel unhappy, lonely, and get hurt easily. The heart chakra can be unblocked by practicing gratitude. And also by repeating positive affirmations is a great way to heal the negative programming. As a healing center, the heart chakra has the ability to let go of the past experiences and forgive others. When the heart chakra is balanced, we're fully connected to ourselves. We're able to give and receive love and have compassion for ourselves and others. Our bodies are our greatest gifts. It's our responsibility to learn to respect and honor it. As this chakra is associated with the element of air, Breathwork is a powerful practice to bring peace to the heart and remove all the stuck or negative energy. Getting in touch with nature and getting fresh air is beneficial for this chakra. Exercising, eating healthy and bright green foods like spinach or kale helps to restore the balance in the heart chakra. Also engaging in the activities that bring love, passion and joy to our heart. The heart knows. That's why it's important to follow our heart because it has all the answers to our happiness. Serotonin, I'm happy. Boom, happiness occurs. Nicotine, I smoke a cigarette. I feel stimulated for a while. That gives me my receptor, right? So the brain works on the basis of these receptors. Now, what they found was that serotonin, which is the feel good molecule, <laughs> has a structure like this. So it fits onto the brain somewhere with this structure of molecules. Forget the chemistry, it just fits like this. But they found that with mushrooms, very similar structure, just one added complex molecules here. Right? They found with DMT, which is what I'm going to talk about now, that it is actually very similar. And it just connects in a new way here. Dimethyltryptamine, called God molecule. And this is the baby that we've been looking for for all these years. And I think we finally found it. This is the molecule that the pineal gland creates, right? It's a distortion of serotonin. So under certain circumstances, like excessive sunlight, darkness, fasting, hallucinogens, uh, meditation, rhythm, dancing, trancing, you will get an awakening 
inside the pineal gland that releases DMT. So we do know that there is a biology today that can explain the experience of spiritual enlightenment, of mystical experiences. And I would suggest to you, this is my argument, that this is the root of all religions. You know, you know everything else is scripture and metaphor after that. At its core is this awakening. But I would suggest to you something else, that it's actually awakening of three different parts. One is the lower part, which connects us to earth. One is the heart and one is the head. Now to get to the head, we have to go through the heart. This is the yoga. This is the idea of yoga, right? You have to climb up. It, that's why we say ascension. That's why we say aspiration. That's why we say lift your mind up because you're going upwards. That means we're trying to get to the pineal gland. We're in such a massive time of change and enlightenment. Absolutely. What does that mean and how does the, you know, the pineal gland kind of assist us in that process? Well, we're going through an evolution right now. You know, I mean, human beings aren't meant to stand on, in the same place. But um, we were being used to using our five senses up till now and it's very limiting because, you know, we see, we smell, we hear, but what? So the pineal gland is actually, uh, it's located in the middle down here and it correlates to what we call the third eye. You can't see the third eye, but it's what we call the sixth sense. That means that it's seeing beyond what the five senses see. And uh, what's happened is that, I mean, this is a secret that they've known in ancient Egypt. They know it in the Vatican. You, everywhere you go in the Vatican, you see this pine. pine. Right, and no one right. knew what it was. Yeah. I want to continue this because we actually have a clip from this video talking about just this. It's fascinating. Amazing. Fascinating. Yeah. Many ancient esoteric traditions and mystical schools knew of the potential of the pineal. The ancient Greeks believed it to be our connection to the realms of thought. Buddhists know it as a symbol of spiritual awakening. In Hinduism, the pineal connects with the third eye chakra, the seat of intuition and clairvoyance. Jesus proclaimed that the eye is the lamp of the body, so then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If Rene Descartes is right, and the pineal gland is indeed the seat of the human soul, then these traditions are correct in believing that it serves as the connecting link between the physical and spiritual worlds. Fascinating. Amazing. It's fascinating. And why has science, like Western science, had a hard, such a hard time kind of saying, okay, there's something to this? Well, because somebody who deals in the spirit just has to say, I've had an experience, and right. he believes it, and he doesn't have to prove anything. A scientist has to prove it. He has to say, look, I can see it. It's here. I'm holding it. It's tangible. But what, what's happened now is that science has come to a point where it has to start correlating what the spiritual world has been saying all along because they've reached a standpoint. That's what quantum physics is, you know. We say a mirror, you know, what I give out comes back to me. So they have to show a mirror, light going on it and coming back. They have to prove it. Um, it's not that they're behind. It's just that they need to understand. Spirit, spiritualism doesn't have to understand. It only needs to experience. And know. And know. But the yeah. knowingness comes from a belief that lives within you. You right. already have it. You come in with it and you're open to it. This whole thing about the pineal gland or the third eye is to show us that there is a law and we're going to keep talking about Have you ever had a brain gasm? That's right. Like an orgasm in your brain. Well, according to Joe Dispenza, that is possible, and there are three steps to make it happen. Hey, I'm Baba Buddha. I'm a brain master. Ha, no. I'm a breath master, Qigong instructor, and a Reiki master, as well as an Eastern Body Works massage therapy. I'm here to help you utilize the power in your breath to bring yourself into those higher states of being so that you can heal yourself. So in order to have a brain gasm, you first must activate the pineal gland. And the first step in doing that is activating the pineal gland through the piezoelectric effect. Now, if you don't know anything about the piezoelectric effect, well, you're in luck. I'm a breath master. I've already done a video on teaching you how to induce the piezoelectric effect inside your brain. Check it out. Now, this next part is still going to be utilizing the breath by moving the cerebral spinal fluid all the way up into your brain. Once this fluid hits your brain, it moves in two directions. The flow moves up through the ventricles in your brain, through the fourth ventricle into the third ventricle. And guess what sits at the back of the third ventricle? Your pineal gland. Now, the second moves around to the back of the cerebellum 
and that pushes against the backside of the pineal gland. Now the pineal gland has these little hairs called cilia and when the fluid moves around them, it stimulates them and it actually ejaculates metabolites. Yes, I said ejaculates. Maybe that's where you got that idea for a braingasm. But we're not done yet. There's still one other thing that has to happen before the braingasm. And this one's super cool because as the fluid is moving and it's creating that inductance field, and again, if you don't understand inductance field, again, you're in luck. Check out my video on how to create an inductance field inside your body. But that inductance field creates that toroidal field moving in an upward direction. But now once your pineal gland is activated, now that creates a reverse toroidal field where the energy is moving in through the top of your head down into your body. And this information coming in is like messages from the quantum field. And the pineal gland is the transducer that takes all that information because electromagnetic frequency carries information. And that information is transduced into beautiful, vivid imagery, messages, and so now when all three messages of these things are happening you. at the same time, that is the brain gasm because you're having a liberation of energy, you're receiving vivid imagery, and you're having an ejaculation of metabolites in your brain, and you are having a brain gasm. But the cool thing is you feel it all over your entire body. It's like ah, euphoric acid. I think I just made that up. Follow me for more because you're gonna learn so much about how you can utilize your breath to bring you into mind states that are gonna blow your mind. 95% of serotonin is, is made in the gut. Serotonin being that joyful chemical, dopamine being more of a temporary pleasure, and serotonin being more of an eternal joy. So serotonin is very important. That's why having your gut be healthy is so important to fighting off disease, which is very important at this time that we're living in right now. That's why you're happy when you eat. So it makes you happy. Which literally means the majority of people suffering from anxiety, depression, and insecurity, it's all gut related. The majority of things, period, are all gut related because the gut is the powerhouse. People don't realize that when you're being developed in your mother's womb the brain and the stomach the gut are one tissue and they separate during development so the same tissue and connect to the vagus nerve and become the enteric nervous system which is the gut and the central nervous system to the spinal cord what people don't realize is there's more nerves in the enteric nervous system than there are in the central nervous system thus the saying butterflies in my stomach go with your gut people say this but it actually has really lots of validity so mood mental health autism adhd anxiety depression schizophrenia insecurity all those things are gut related And it's powers. One of the researchers at Shanghai University has found that the human hand can be used as a powerless infrared radiation source in multiple Wait, applications. What? In their paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, the group notes that the human hand naturally emits infrared radiation and they demonstrate that the radiation can be captured and used. Human hands wow. actually emit light in the invisible infrared spectrum. This source of radiation, the researchers noted, could potentially be used in applications ranging from signal generation to encryption systems. Students of mystery traditions from around the world and Reiki practitioners have been speaking about the power that is emitted from the human hands for centuries. It's interesting that science is starting to catch up with this information and publish it. Slow down your aging today with new science. The DNA is the genetic code, and every time the cell divides, you have to copy that code. Every time the cell divides, the DNA gets a little shorter. But nature, of course, being quite intelligent, adds a piece of DNA at the end that is not the gene. 
It's just an extension. It's called a telomere. Every time I copy it, I lose a piece of the telomere. But I didn't cut into the genes. What's aging all about? Aging result when you copy the DNA so many times that you run out of that telomere, and the next time you copy, you're cutting off the gene, which interferes with your biology. And the scientist back in the 60s, Leonard Hayflick, calculated how many times can a cell divide before it runs out of telomere? You know, 90, 100 years at max, uh, and that's your lifetime because that's when you run out of telomeres. That was very depressing because it says, oh my God, if uh, I'm under stress, I actually cut the telomeres even faster. The more stress you're under, the more that it disappears. Now, scientists found there was an enzyme called telomerase. It adds the length of the telomere. So as the cells are dividing, if you can activate this enzyme, it will extend the telomeres so the cells have relatively unlimited lifespan. So they start to find out, well, what influences the telomere? Well, the biggest thing is lack of love. If you have a lack of love, the feedback will shut off the telomerase enzyme. Stress shuts off the enzyme. If you have no gratitude or appreciation of life, it shuts off the enzyme. Why? Well, if you don't like life, then why give you extra life? That's what the enzyme is just responding. Love and self-love, which is most critical, is one of the, the big drivers of telomerase. Gratitude and joy of being in this world enhances the enzyme. Why? If you love the world, you want more, and the cells will give you more. The most important contributor to telomerase activity is service that you are doing something on this planet you have a mission to do something and that your nervous system is telling yourselves i'm not ready to go i have a job to do here's some human cheat codes that are probably going to change your life have you ever had sinus issues which makes it tough to breathe through your nose? Well, I got a solution for you. First, take your tongue and push it to the roof of your mouth, and then take your thumb and push it against the bridge of your nose for 30 seconds. After doing this, try and breathe out of both your nostrils and you'll be able to breathe fine. If you ever take tests and it's tough for you to remember what you studied the night before or week before, chew gum while studying. If you chew that same flavor of gum during the test, you're almost always gonna remember everything you studied. If you ever need to get rid of hiccups, take a really deep breath, hold for as long as you can, and then slowly exhale. You're gonna watch the hiccups fade away. If you're okay with the existential panic, keep watching. How real is anything? Our eyes can only see visible light, and that's just 0.0035% of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So we're blind to over 99% of the world. Not just that, but we have a hole in the back of the eye where the optic nerve exits the eyeball. There are no photoreceptors here, but instead of seeing holes, the brain fills in the blanks with its memory instead of real-time information. Similarly, our hearing range is limited from 20 hertz to around 20,000 hertz. Above and below this, our brain is deaf to those sounds. The world is noisy and we're deaf to most of it. Animals, plants and bugs communicate with each other and it's even thought that plants scream when they're cut emitting ultrasonic screams. Same thing with smell. We've trained dogs to sniff out cancer, Parkinson's and even COVID. But our olfactory neurons are just nowhere near complex enough to decipher these odors. Not just that, but here's something wild. This is the chemical indole. In small concentrations, we associate it with something flowery, but in large concentrations, it smells like poo. What we experience in our reality is just a tiny fraction of the real world due to the evolutionary limitations imposed on our senses. Our brain is basically just winging it. Our brain takes all the information from our sensory organs and the output is just what it thinks is happening and what it thinks you need to know. So technically, we've never actually experienced real life. At best, you've only experienced a heavily edited... Whichever way you look at that, your brain will tell you that the long end is nearer to you. Now, it is near to you now, but now I'll put it back near my body. Now it's nearer to me, but it still looks as if it's near you, doesn't it? Because you're used to seeing things bigger when they are closer to you. And we'll let it go. Now you know that it's turning around in circles. In fact, if you look at it from above, you can see that it's turning around in a circle. But now your brain is doing something strange. It's telling you that it's not going around in a circle, but it's oscillating. In other words, it's turning part way, stopping, and then going back the other way. Now that's a strange effect, isn't it? But if you think that's strange, wait till I add something through the middle. What am I going to add? Well, I'm going to add a ballpoint pen. And to do that, 
I've placed a little piece of double-sided sticky tape on the ballpoint pen. You can use ordinary sticky tape if you like. I'll place it right through the centre of the window and press it in place like that. Now this time, by fixing on the pen, you'll be able to see that the pen is going around in a circle and not going backwards and forwards. But what's your brain going to tell you about the window? Will your brain allow you to see the window going around in a circle will the, with the pen? Or are you going to see something really strange? Well, have a look at that. That's unbelievable, isn't it? You can see the pen going around in a circle, but your brain is telling you that the window is going part way around and turning and going the other way. And yet in order to do that, the two things have to pass through one another, the pen and the window. You know it's not possible. You know it can't happen. And yet as you look at it, you see them going through one another every time they go around. An amazing illusion, the Ames window. Despite what you might be thinking, these two circles are not equal. I repeat, these two circles are not equal. One is in fact larger than the other. What I need you to do is determine which one that is. So, please raise your hand if you believe the blue circle is larger than the red. Alright. Please raise your hand if you believe the red circle is larger than the blue. Alright, very good. Now, before I said anything about these two circles, what was your first instinct? Equal, right? because they look equal. And the reason why they look equal is because, in fact, they are equal. These two circles are identical. <laughs> Yet I got just about every one of you to raise your hand and say that they're not. So what do we learn? That you can be manipulated like that to believe in something that goes against your natural instincts. Just, just imagine, just imagine as a child you're taught that the blue circle is larger than the red. If you say it enough times, you convince yourself that's the truth. If you're told the lie enough times, it becomes part of your reality. This will convince you that your eyes lie to you. Here we have some traffic lights or stop lights. I've put a cyan filter over them now. Now red light can't pass through a cyan filter, yet you're still seeing the red light, right? Well, I can guarantee you that there is no red light there at all. There's no red at all. It's your brain working over time convincing you of the red. Can I prove it? Well, I can try. Let's block out the rest of the traffic lights. Now look, it was gray all along. There is no red. If you enjoy these, please like, share or comment and I'll make some more soon.